Ah, good morning, good evening, wherever you are, guys. Um, this is a Schneider Electric AC coupling with battery based inverters presentation. Um, my name is Dr. Jerry Paz. I'm the APAC Level 3 Technical Support um, located in Australia, in Adelaide to be exact. Uh, so today we will talk about the AC coupling with battery based inverters. And uh, if you have any questions, could you please um, wait to the end of the presentation and then um, or you can use the text feature to ask any questions during the presentation, and we'll try to answer them as we go along for those text ones. But if you have any verbal ones, just wait until the presentation is finished. Okay, so we'll get started. Before we do, we have got a bit of a warning and safety notice. Basically, you've got to be qualified before you can actually serve with the equipment. Um, do not use it, this training presentation as an instructional tool. You need some sort of hands-on training to be actually uh, be competent in use of our equipment. It's just a demonstration. Uh, failure to follow the rules uh, means you might result in death or serious injury, so be careful. Okay, some of the things we're going to talk about today are the introduction, why AC coupled, AC coupling limitations, AC coupling generator-based systems, uh, battery inverter, PV inverter sizing, installation and configuration, and we'll also touch on multi-unit and free-phase installations where you have more than one XW plus and more than one PV inverter. And uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, questions on the, at the end of the presentation. So some of the references you might look into is the Solar website, um, where we have all the documentation plus all the manuals are located there. I would suggest you also get familiar with the solutions guide, AC couple systems with connect XW plus XW and Pro and SW solutions guide. Um, that's got all the information you require in some case. Introduction. So why AC coupling? Basically, in this case, uh, PV inverter is connected to the output of a battery inverter. That gives a uh, reference of AC um, as an AC couple systems. What happens is the uh, battery based inverter provides the reference waveform for the PV inverter to actually come back online and start outputting power. Thus, you can say the inverter does couple with each other and able to share distributed energy to the required loads. So it can actually both run at the same time and the energy distribution can be done from the PV inverter or from the battery base side or the grid, depending if you're grid or off grid. On DC coupling, basically what happens there is that you'll have a solid charge controller rather than a PV inverter. Now, in this case, the solid charge controller would charge the batteries. Then the batteries then provide the power to the XW plus inverter. And then that will again go back to, that, to the loads or back to the grid if you're allowed to export. Uh, YAC couple. Basically, in the applications are we have an existing PV inverter, but when the grid goes down, it doesn't benefit from solar electricity, which means that you want to have make sure that you can, even if the PV inverter, sorry, even if the grid has gone down, you can have some uh, that PV inverter still runs and provides energy back to the loads. Uh, also provide a backup capability to existing solar investment and the operation side of it you can retrofit to existing solar pvs if the existing pv inverter is compatible with the xw plus or xw pro you can then have backup power soft consumption and you can also reduce your peak charges um, benefits basically uh, value position power for pure sine wave backup power it does do seamlessly, seamlessly transfer to battery backup when grids are available. Basically, uh, transfer times can be between eight milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, depending which inverter you pick. Um, you can use the existing PV inverter, and what it does, it does a frequency shift power management, which means it will vary the frequency, and then the inverter will start deriding itself to match the loads or the battery charge required. Um, it's more efficient in some ways because you actually power the load directly from the PV inverter rather than go through the charging of batteries and discharging from the batteries. So we'll look at some of the applications. Uh, I see couple supported by connect range inverters, charges and PV inverters. You can do, actually do both. You can do a hybrid solution. Uh, the low profile application will determine which method is best. Uh, DC coupling still prefer solution for on-grid and off-grid as no limit on PV arrays and charges. It's easier to configure and you have better control of how power is consumed and where from. Um, We'll go into more into the, into the advantages and disadvantages in a second. But uh, it all more goes back to where you with a low profile. That's the thing you need to do before you do and look at the uh, which special you're going to use. You're going to work out what your low profile is 
how you the and user is using his energy during the day and during the night time. We can see over here where we have the energy being used, the inverter uh, low energy requirements matches up with inverter power output. That would be more suitable for an AC coupling solution because you're using the energy directly from the TV array and you're not actually um, charging and discharging the battery, which means you become more efficient. However, if your bat loads are in the evening or early morning, you're better off with a DC couple solution, as then you, you can then store the energy being generated during the day, and that can then be used at night time or in the early mornings. So I said to you, you've got to make sure you do the low profile first to see which one will be more suitable. So in off-grid installations, basically you've got no grid. You can have, you're going to have a generator, and then you can have some uh, Peripheral equipment, say so the AGS, S system control panel, com box, or the next battery monitor. Uh, and you have the PV inverter will be located on the load output side of the XW. And then that goes directly for the sub panel, and then goes directly to the residential loads. If we're looking at the um, DC couple solution for an off grid installation, you'll see that the PV inverter has now been replaced with a solar charge controller. And in this case, what happens is the solar charge controller will charge those batteries, and then the batteries will then be discharged into the XW Plus to provide the residential load energy requirements. So advantage of DC coupling, basically simpler to design and install. It has got lower cost of components, uh, less components required for less space to install. The charge for the solar charge controller can be regulated to prevent export back to the grid or back fed into the generator, which means the XW actually regulates the, how the energy use, is being used uh, and then directs it accordingly. Uh, and also solar charge controllers are now available with operating voltage up to 600 volts DC, which makes them equivalent to a, a grid tight inverter. However, it got some disadvantages, basically, because you are working on extra DC extra low voltage. You need high current for heavy and costly copper cable. Uh, also, cable runs are also limited to minimize DC losses. One thing about the XW is that the and the XW Plus Pro uh, is that they require decent sized DC cabling. Otherwise, the losses in the DC side can impact on the operation of the XW. Uh, equipment placement becomes more difficult due to cabling restrictions. So like you, you got to make sure that you got enough room to bend the cables around to the XW. DC circuit protection is more expensive than AC circuit protection equipment. Obviously, you need bigger circuit breakers due to the higher currents. Efficiency is lower due to charge and discharging from batteries. Um, this is where you got actually every time you charge a battery, you lose some. You've got to put more energy in than you can get out than you actually put into it. Uh, when you're discharging, you, you've got to take. You're going to only got to limit how much energy you can actually draw from the batteries. So dual conversion results in reduced conversion efficiency. When we look at the AC coupling advantages, basically, uh, if you've got daytime energy needs, it can be met directly from the solar PV inverter. Without the need to be first stored on the battery, which means you don't have to actually go into the XW to store them. You just go straight from the PV inverter into the loads. Uh, obviously, AC coupling hardware is easier to install with less losses and supports long cable runs because you're working at a higher voltage. Uh, you have greater flexibility and the place of the components. And you can use existing PV installations to upgrade the system to add battery storage. Um, the only thing you've got to remember is that you make sure the PV inverter covers the off-grid applications, specifically AC coupling with a battery-based inverter. Uh, and also going to make sure the PV inverter is capable of operating when it's AC coupled with a battery-based inverter to form the local grid. Um, and PV inverters with impedance sensing anti in scheme are not compatible with inverter charger. So basically, if you meet, because the impedance of the X, XW plus is not like the impedance from, uh, from the grid. Now, uh, we come to the disadvantage of AC coupling. Basically, regardless of the, of the system size, the maximum allowable rating of any AC coupled PV inverter is a lesser of the maximum allowable charge and power of the battery or 125% of the continuous charge power rating of the Connex XW plus XW Pro or SW inverters, which means, for example, if you have a 6.8 kilowatt XW Plus, the maximum PV inverter you can hook up to it would be 8.5 kilowatts. There's also going to be higher equipment costs and installation costs due to the uh, additional programming for both the XW Plus as well as the PV inverter. 
because he can't stop exporting when you're AC coupling, you may have to put an export limit device or load dumps if you require a zero export solution by the utility. Uh, now, because AC coupling systems use frequency shift to control to regulate the power of the PV inverter output, that might also affect the operation of frequency-sensitive equipment, for example, PCs, clocks, and that sort of thing that rely on the frequency. Uh, like I said before, more complex parameters, configuration and setup means more costs. So, for example, you're on the PV inverter, you might have to uh, set up your ramp rates, your frequency stop, frequency start on the inverters. Okay, uh, allows grid tight energy export and AC couple charging. However, it cannot stop exporting. As I said before, this once you hooked up to the grid, you've got a PV inverter, it will then try to export out if there's any excess energy. You will need to put in a zero export solution. So the, when the grid's on, grid tight in energy export and local use. When the grid's off, you've got local energy use and battery charging. Um, when you're off grid with AC couple solar, when you've got the generator on instead of the grid, you got the you gotta have the generator on with the grid tight inverter off. You cannot have both on at the same time. But otherwise you're gonna start back feeding the generator and you might damage your generator. Uh, the hybrid inverter can do AC input charge to the batteries and can then supply the loads. When you got the generator off and the grid inverter inverter is on, this one can then do direct uh, power to the loads, it can also charge the batteries. Okay, some of the limitations we're gonna strike when you do start doing AC coupling, basically is to do with the compatibility of the inverters. Uh, because what happens is you do grid, if you use a frequency shift, some of them might not support a full frequency shift. Um, and then they might be fully compatible with a PV inverter and the batteries inverters. Uh, some implementation of anti-island protection the PV inverters use the grid impedance, like I said before. So those type of inverters will not be compatible. Uh, not all IC couplings will automatically work within the mix of PV inverters and battery inverter brands. So you're basically going to do a bit of research, make sure that the inverter you're trying to use for the XW Plus, XW Pro or SW is going to be compatible with frequency shift. Um, when you use a generator as a secondary source of AC power, it's, you'll make sure it doesn't come back on the line and back onto the generator. So you either got to bypass it uh, or you have the a change of a switch so that either one or the other is on, but not both at the same time. And the, like, it also is that the system size maximum power of any one PV inverter might not be more than the power rating of the XW Pro, XW Plus, CSW, to which is connected to. So basically, uh, it's a one to one ratio for the PV inverter to the XW Plus. And you might also need to consider the rating at the working temperature because obviously our XW Plus will, uh, will start, will have, um, uh, will derate itself according to what the temperature is and reach 6.8. It's actually 6.8 kilowatts for 30 minutes at 25 degrees C. At 40 degrees C, it's actually six kilowatts continuous. So depending how you're using it, at, at what temperature you're going to be using it, uh, it might limit the size of inverter you can hook up to it. Uh, also, AC couple is not normally recommended for, lithium, for systems using lithium-ion batteries, uh, unless a control system is installed that assures correct charging and discharge in the lithium-ion battery pack. Basically, what happens is the lithium ions are a bit more finicky when it comes to charge and discharge rates. Um, and so, and the frequency shift AC coupling alone basically does not allow the fine control of the charge current. So basically, you need to put some sort of suitable battery management system that can uh, regulate the charging and discharging and also connect back up to the XW to uh, turn it off in case of emergencies. So we also highly recommend inclusion, include an over voltage protection relay to disconnect the AC couple PV inverter in the event that the voltage reaches or exceeds the battery maximum operating voltage. So it's just a bit of a backup. So check manufacturer's recommended applications, uh, follow the PV and battery sizing guidelines and make sure the lithium battery can accommodate the high inrush current from the initial connection of the battery base inverters. So you might also need a pre-charge circuit might be required. So just check with your battery manufacturer first. IC coupling with generator-based systems. Basically over here, we have an IC couple uh, system, which is still having the grid on there. It's got a generator and that becomes your secondary source of IC power. 
the main thing is you've got to have, make sure that the grid tight inverter does not see the generator or generator does not see the PV inverter, which way, which way, way you want to look at it. Uh, so you either have a bypass mode or you actually have a, a switch over so that interconnects so that not both of them are at the same time. Uh, when the condition of the PV generation exceeds the AC low, the battery charging consumption, as I've said before, could flow back to the generator with damaging effects. And make sure you always check the recommendations of your equipment manufacturer to make sure that it will be suitable. So while we're here, we have an AC coupled system. Um, when you have an AC coupled system with a generator, you need a generator disconnect switch or change shape of switch must be used. Uh, as you can see over here, there's a change shape of switch. No one's normally open, that one's normally closed. And when you change over from one to the other, uh, for example, when you have the generator starting, you can have it automatically uh, detect for the contactor so that the, uh, it closes and this other one, PV inverter, actually opens. We can use interlock relays if you like. Okay, battery inverter and PV inverter sizing. Um, you can use various configurations from a single unit to multiple units in parallel, uh, or as a three phase configuration, or as a large multi cluster system. Uh, regardless of the size, however, we use a rule of thumb. Basically, the maximum power of one PV inverter must not be more than the power rating of the X and XW Plus or XW Pro to which it's connected to. So the PV inverter rate of power should not exceed the XW place rate of power and AC current, and it must match the phase configuration. So, so when we look at the uh, inverter charger and some of the, the continuous rating, uh, and then look at the compatible PV inverter ratings. Well, for example, we use these are, these are legacy ones, the RL is just another example of the inverter. Uh, obviously, there are inverter brands out there that are compatible with our system, like SMA or Fronius, but then you need to you need to confirm with them whether that will work. But if you look at the 2524, that's really only compatible with a two kilowatt inverter. The 4024 and the 4048 SW are only really compatible with a 3.4 kilowatt inverter. The 4024, 4548, um, 4024 is four kilowatts, 4548 to 5.5, 6048 to six. 7048 is 5.5, 85, 48, 6.8, and the XW Plus, XW Pro, 68, 48, NA, 6.8. When we look at the architecture, um, basically, you have, if you're grid connected, you can have a main panel with the grid connection on, then it goes off to the inverter. That then hooks up to the battery bank. By the way, you do require a battery bank to, for the inverter to actually work, uh, the inverter charger to actually work. Then that goes off your sub panel where your backup loads are. Um, now, the sub panel can then be the connection point for your PV inverter, and then you have your solar array hooked up to the PV inverter to provide you the solar energy come back through to, to the backup loads. That's using a grid forming AC source. Uh, it can also go into AC pass through where the PV power is not being used up by the loads, so you have excess energy being generated. That gets got two options it can either go into the battery bank or can be exported back to the grid. It all depends on your configuration and what the utility will allow you to do. Uh, grid forming, this is when you have no grid or generator op in operational. And here, the inverter will then provide the AC waveform for the PV inverter to synchronize with. And then that excess energy being generated can go into the loads or can go back into charge the batteries. Once the batteries are fully charged, it'll then do the frequency shift which means the inverter will start deriding itself. And then so that the power out of the PV inverter will match the load requirements. Uh, for rule 21 in California, we now we have, um, it has to have um, certain requirements when it connects up to the grid. For example, if you, Frequency goes above 62 hertz or below 57 hertz. It has to be on voltage uh, voltage ride through or fault ride through. And then for at least 300 seconds, once the 300 seconds uh, have finished, it then needs to, the inverter needs to then disconnect from the, um, from the grid. Uh, it also can do a frequency, frequency, uh, sorry, power derating itself depending on what the frequency is. For example, a 60.1 hertz, 
it's fully output at 62.1. 62.1, it then starts, that's when it drops off, but there's a ramp right so associated with that so that it, uh, it doesn't actually just do a shut off. It'll then slowly ramp down as the frequency increases. And go and go back online to full power output once uh, the frequency goes reaches back down to 60. That's if you want to export. So we look at the full curtailing PV inverters, such as the uh, old legacy RLs and CLs. Lastly, what else, what it can do is this thing called micro grid mode. This will allow the grid forming inverter to accurately regulate charging by adjusting its AC frequency and regulating the PV inverter power for all phases of the charging cycle. Basically, what it does, it makes, it makes sure that the, the batteries are, uh, are fully charged um, and not overcharged because it will follow through. If you remember, the, you got three stage charging on the XW Plus and the and XW Pro, where the first two phases are, are boost and then absorption, oh, sorry, bulk and absorption. And during the bulk stage, it is a constant volt, uh, constant current varying voltage. And during the absorption stage, it is a constant voltage varying current. So if you want to vary that current, you've got to make sure that you regulate the output of the PV inverter in the, uh, so that it doesn't uh, overcharge the battery bank. Uh, it is only used for off-grid applications. Um, basically, uh, where, the, where compliance with grid interconnect requirements are not mandated, it must not be used in grid interactive systems since the necessary parameters in the PV inverter may avoid local grid compliance. But as you can see over here, on the right hand side, the curves for the as the battery voltage rises, the frequency uh, will rise to derate the system as the power requirements are, are, no, are not as high during the absorption as it is during bulk. Uh, we support different compatibles, supporting different configurations, applications. Um, battery charge regulation is accomplished using a frequency shift, as we've been talking about before. Basically, it's a frequency of a power ramp that utilizes active power reduction versus frequencies. Uh, it is a feature of a smart inverters, uh, but it might not be ab might be it may be absent in all the legacy PV inverters. So some of the older PV inverters, basically, they when they see the grid frequency changing, they can either do a partial comp containment or they can actually just drop off. So as a, once it reaches a point of the frequency where it gets too high or too low, some of those legacy ones will just do, turn itself off and not ramp down. Another thing is the AC couple connects SW configuration, not recommended for self-consumption, as this SW will always draw power from the grid, maximum of two amps, that's uh, under all conditions, uh, except when exporting, obviously. That sort of prevents the grid injection so that they, because what the SW, it cannot export out. So, but when you do a D, remember that when you do AC coupling, it will export out. So you can't do a soil consumption solution. If uh, the only way you can do a soil consumption with the SW is to do a DC couple. So we talked about the partial containment. Basically, it exports inverters to validity to reduce the output power. However, it doesn't go all the way down to zero, so which limits the level of battery charging control available. So um, basically, what happens up to about around 50% of the PV inverter output will be curtailed. After that, it might turn itself off uh, once it reaches that frequency. Uh, Non-curtailing ones, which are the legacy ones, it means there's no response to frequency shift. And what happens is they'll cease exporting power when the frequency exceeds a predefined threshold that's been programmed into the unit. Uh, so what that's going to happen is you got to have this the inverter will start cycling on and off, uh, and might eventually damage the relays if you do it, if it does it too often. So uh, right through frequency inverters IEEE 1547 requirement. Basically, you can see from the right hand graph. You have the uh, battery doing a bulk, and the voltage rises, and the frequency then will start rising when it goes to absorption, which is the red line, uh, because the current requirement is not as high, um, and then all stop altogether when it reaches 60.5 in this case. So I'm look at the actual battery voltage. You can see over here. On the left-hand side, 
Um, yeah, the battery voltage rises up to from say 54.7 it looks of thing, up to 57 volts uh, with the bulk uh, for the bulk voltage shift. So you program to the XW plus, uh, and then you, the battery current would then start dropping off. Uh, you can see the frequency would then rise so that uh, it matches what the battery battery charging requires are. Some grid time manufacturers have optional off-grid profiles available if you want to do a frequency shift. Uh, depending on where you're located, they might have different profiles that suit it. Uh, on some of our uh, inverters, actually, you might have to vary the RAM rate to make sure that you, you're not cycling too many often, not cycling too many times. So in this case, the 0 0.02 hertz per second to the, to the battery reaches bulk. Uh, and 0 0.2 hertz per second when the battery voltage goes above two volts, so you reach the maximum charge or the higher battery charge is higher than the maximum charge rate. Now, pr protecting the battery from overcharge, basically what happens here is that the frequency shift is that if you've got five kilowatts coming out of the PV inverter, but you lose only two kilowatts, then you have three kilowatts available they can go and charge your batteries. Uh, so that if you look at the sums, you can see that then you'd have 55.5 amps DC available to charge your, your battery bank. However, what happens if your loads get to five kilowatts, the inverter is only pumping out five kilowatts, it means that you're not gonna have any available energy to charge up your batteries. So you gotta make sure that you look at your load profile, see if you've got enough charging capability from the XW, so, sorry, from the PV inverter uh, size so that it's got enough available current for the XW that to charge those batteries if you want to use those batteries at night time as well. So it's all to do, it's a bit of a give and take here where you look at the your low requirements, look what the generation capability is, and uh, you need to make sure you have enough energy to charge those batteries during the day. Um, Now for the Connect XW Plus, XW Pro, the maximum charge rate setting only regulates charge from the AC1 or AC2 port, but not the AC output port for AC couplings, which means that uh, don't rely on the maximum charge rate, because that will then, uh, this doesn't apply for the, when you're charging from the load side. So that's why it requires the frequency shift to work correctly. So you don't have a charge of batteries. Um, Frequency shift on smart inverters. This is the UL1741 SIPV inverters have relaxed frequency trip limits and frequency what functions advanced interconnect standard. Basically, same sort of thing. You have the uh, battery voltage that rises, but they actually follow through the battery current will will require uh, will follow through what the requirement is are, and so the low AC frequency changes as required. Uh, so the, the the profile it follows more closely what the battery volt what the battery charging requirements are because it's smart enough to detect that uh, okay i need this much energy i'm gonna then go and talk to the uh, string inverter using frequency shift so that the, the charging the current available uh it's going to match up what the pv inverter is pu pushing out so smart charge basically it's only available on the connect sw inverters and batteries exclu uh, exclusively charged from the pv inverter at the same time, the energy stored in the batteries cannot be exported back to the grid. So basically, it just matches what's coming into the battery, and then it starts to run in the SW, so that it doesn't actually um, export anything back out to the grid. Uh, it does require a grid connection and AC couple mode enable. Um, basically, it allows ex excess energy from the PV inverters to charge the batteries and maintain the battery voltage to ensure flow back to the grid to zero during your bulk and absorption stage. Uh, once they finish the absorption stage, there's nothing actually stopping the PV inverter from exporting back to the grid. As long as the batteries have to accept energy, the SW will continue diverting excess PV production to the battery. Once the battery banks are level such that it's not, not all excess energy from the PV inverter has been absorbed, it will then flow out to the upstream loads in the house and not connected to the SW's AC output port, which means it will export. That's what it means. So I'm look at the, some of the energy flows on the uh, 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 grid tired 
inverter AC couple. When we have the battery at say 100%, we can then have a load say at 5,000 watts. We've got the 2,000 watts coming from the PV inverter. Then what's going to happen? We still need to get supply the, the power of the loads. If you enable grid support on the XW, it means that you're going to have to have 3,000 watts coming from the battery bank. Okay, because you enable grid support and nothing from the from the grid itself. When you have the battery state of charge at 50%, so you say you reach recharge volts, uh, your loads to 1,000 watts, the PV inverter is now pumping out 5,000 watts. So, because I only require 1,000 watts of the loads, it means I can have 4,000 watts going into the XW plus. And depending on the battery uh, requirements or battery size, you can have that full, full 4,000 watts into the battery bank. But if it only requires 2,000 watts, it means the other 2,000 watts will go into the grid. But if you, because this one requires 4,000 watts into the battery bank, it means you can have nothing out to the grid. Uh, at the moment, this utility allows you to export to the grid and your battery charge a thousand, 100%. So we have, still have a load of 1,000 watts. PV is pumping out 5,000 watts. So 4,000 watts are available to go somewhere. That's going to go there, but because your batteries are fully charged now, then it's going to start zero to the battery bank and 4,000 watts to the export, back to the grid. Back to the grid. Uh, you this allows export to the grid. In this case, you're not allowed to export. So we still have the batteries are fully charged, loads of 1,000 watts. So still got 5,000 watts in the PV inverter. I've still got an excess of 4,000 watts. And that will try to push out to the grid because nothing wants to go back to the battery bank. However, you're not allowed to use it, not allowed to export out. So what you need to do is put a power meter and a PLC. They can communicate, for example, a mod bus back to the PV inverter so that the um, net flow will be uh, limited to zero by ramping down the, the PV inverter using the external export limiting device so that the PV inverter only then pumps out a thousand watts and everything else makes, it goes back to zero. The thousand watts would then just go straight to the load and nothing into the XW plus or the grid. Now, when you're off grid, your batteries are say stay of charge 50%, so you want to reach, you hit recharge volts, your loads are thousand watts, your PV inverter is 5,000 watts. So you've got a thousand watts into the load, that's your first priority. You've still got a 4,000 watts available, and then that obviously is going to go into the battery power, into the, into the battery to recharge the batteries. Uh, as that, um, but now if you've got the battery that's 100%, you've still got a 1,000 watts going to the load, but because there's nothing else, that 4,000 will try to go into the XW Plus, Unfortunately, but it can't go anywhere because your battery is already ch fully charged. So by, what happens is the next inverter regulates the power output of the PV inverter by frequency shifting. Uh, this frequency shifts from say 50.5 to 52, that, sorry, that's a European model. Um, power outage is regulated from 100% to 0%. So that what happens then is that uh, the PV inverter will degenerate itself to 1,000 watts so that 1,000 watts can then go to loads and nothing can go back into the XW+. Plus. Okay, just a quick look at the installation configuration requirements. Uh, basically, each PV inverter requires its own AC breaker and a critical load sub panel. Uh, recommend to install the AC couple inverters breakers in the AC load sub panel rather than the Connect SWPDP. Um, install one or more battery inverters according to the procedures outlined in the respective installation guide. Uh, same with the install one or more AC couple PV inverters according to the installation guide with the following exception. Instead of connecting the PV inverter's AC output to the main service panel, connect to the AC transfer switch and the XW Plus AC load panel. We'll look at the configuration. When you're finding an AC couple grid connection, grid support will be enabled. Uh, cells enable, disable, sorry. Low, because you're not, uh, it doesn't, re doesn't really matter. It will always sell, so the cell, dis cell Parameters will not uh, will not actually do anything. You can enable low shaving if you 
or say you want to say uh, zero x zero input from the grid what do you not time and then you can then use your batteries if you've got enough if you've got enough storage there then you set up your low shave amps then you set up your low shave start and stop recharge falls the same as before charge cycle has to be two stage I really recommend from um, the AC couple side charge a block charge a block stop low battery cut out it's basically based on the state of charge or you can and you or you use a, a basically voltage uh, equivalent to the state of charge how battery cut out 70 volts sub uh, can be depending on your settings uh, AC coupling has to be enabled uh, with voltage frequency setting as required as set up by the required by the grid tight inverter manufacturer when you're off grid your grid support obviously disabled because you don't have any grid cell be disabled low shaving will be disabled Recharge volts, same thing. State of charge, two stage, recharge cycle. Charge a block, charge a block stop, doesn't really matter. Um, low battery cutout, state of charge, or the um, equivalent voltage for the state of charge. High battery cutout, AC coupling has to be enabled, and voltage frequency settings as required by the grid tight inverter manufacturer. We're also going to make sure that you install the latest version of the firmware on this. Uh, this is just an example. Um, the, for the Combox, Gateway, SW, XW Plus, XW Pro, all those, all those firmwares are available from our website. Uh, and you can install them, uh, download them and install them onto, the, onto, the X, onto those um, devices by using the Connect Gateway, or the Combox, or a configuration tool. The other ones are just our legacy inverters. Uh, where you need to sort of set up, make sure you got the, the right firmware that matches up with the XW Plus for frequency shift. Um, I think we went through this four charge enable, enable to double the charger, search, grid support, only for grid connect system, grid cell, for off grid system with generator is disabled. Some of the other, this is the settings you might want to put in there and the advanced settings for the XW Plus. You can delay the cell, that won't make any difference because it will over sell. The one you do need to put in is the AC coupling. You've got to make sure that's enabled. Okay. Uh, Genesis Plus, that's a different, uh, if you're going to set up for the line one, line two phase uh, imbalancing, you can set up and enable that if you require. On the configuration tool, you can just tick the box for AC coupling. Uh, this is just an example of a Connect SRL where we have set it up to hook up to the uh, XW Plus to set up a microgrid. And basically, what we do is we follow the AC coupling solutions guide. This would only be in the, uh, I think, version E. It's got the RL settings. But we also make sure that the, the firmware is the right version. And then we set up the settings in the microgrid for off grid installations only. Uh, and then so that the frequency. Shift does a power containment for this one, for example, in the European model. Um, but that ramp rate, if we, have, if we have a frequency start, sorry, so the first, a frequency stop and a frequency disconnect. And then we have the ramp rate. Now the ramp rate, uh, what I, from my experience, I had to change it several times to make sure, so that the inverter doesn't cycle off too often. Uh, and there's a bit of a leeway there, a bit of a hysteresis built in so that, um, but it will take a couple of bit of bit of a um, trial and error to get the optimal ramp rate. Uh, we recommend a ramp rate on our recommendation for the RL, but in real life, that sometimes needs to be to tweak a bit to get to make sure they get the right. That doesn't do too many cycles. And that's RL, the RL power output, as you can see, varies when the frequency start to the frequency stop and then disconnect if it gets too high. Uh, efficiencies. When we look at the instantaneous consumption of energy, basically, if you're AC coupling, the PV inverter is 97% efficient. Okay, so you know that that five kilowatts you're outputting uh, is going to get straight to the load because a uh, good efficiency because you're, you're 97%. Solar charge controllers are 96, battery inverters are around 94. The batteries, if you don't take into account, uh, you see the overall efficiency, 97%. Uh, compared to 90% from the DC couple solution. That's when you're powering directly 
from the batteries or directly from the solar charge control. Uh, so, sorry, sorry, from the string inverter. So, however, when you take into account the batteries in the equation, you see if you need to charge your batteries from the AC side and then discharge later on, you're going to see that the efficiencies will be lower when you look at the overall efficiencies. Because the battery inverter has to do not two input and outputs, uh, and then the batteries need to do input and output as well, charge and discharge. Uh, and we do a DC couple solution, it actually comes up a little bit better than the AC couple solution. That's if you have to use the batteries. If you're not using the batteries to power up your loads in the middle of the day, then you know that the, the uh, AC coupling solution will be better. That's why people tend to use hybrid solutions. We have both AC and DC couple. So, uh, three tier approach to protect against over voltage. Basically, what we have the frequency shift. That provides the first level of protection. Then we have this, uh, if I ever the battery voltage occurs, connect Pro auxiliary port triggers an external disconnect relay so that uh, you can then disconnect the PV inverter from the XW plus. And the less third level is your high battery cutout setting. So that uh, the maximum of that is 70 volts. Uh, you can also use a quick fit pre-wired solution. Um, to look at the, um, to make it simplify the installation, you're still going to have a, a sub panel to, for your backup loads and your micro inverters or your PV inverters, whichever one you want to use. We both work. Now, a quick look at the multi unit and free phase installation. Basically, uh, for a single phase, you could have a maximum of four units, can be parallel together, where you have one master and three slaves. That's to do uh, 28 kilowatts, 34 kilowatts. Uh, use a common battery bank, but multiple battery banks are also supported. Um, in an AC couple configuration, the TV inverter should not exceed the rate of the lowest rated XW inverter charger. Uh, if a generator has been used, then the AGS is connected to the master inverter charger. If a generator has been used, then disconnect the AC couple inverters while the generator is running, like I said before. Now, for the Connect Seal 1825, which is the North American models, uh, that's actually only offered in the 480 volts WYE configuration, uh, but the XW Plus only supports 208 volts in WYE configuration, so you might require a step-down transformer uh, of a power rating greater than the total capacity of connected PV inverters. Uh, that must be connected between the PV inverters and the XW Plus system. Uh, and a free phase installation, you get a maximum of 12 units comprising of four clusters of three XW Plus units or XW Pro with one master cluster and three slave clusters. So you can go from 21 kilowatts up to 102 kilowatts. Uh, you can use one battery bank per cluster of three inverters and a, and a total of four battery banks. Uh, one battery monitor required per battery bank. For system featuring nine XW Plus inverter charges or more, uh, connect cluster box required for AC coupling and connection of the generator. The AC connects cluster box is in the um, multi unit planning guide and a multi unit um, design guide. You can find them in the XW Plus um, website. You can download those documents if you want to do if you're going to do a multi cluster installation. You're also going to require an external transfer switch when you have more than two inverters per phase, uh, and because they load, they become greater than 60 amps per phase. That's the, that's the maximum power rating of the transfer switch inside the XWs. So if you're getting more than 60 amps per phase, you're going to have to have external transfer switch. You can monitor the system for the com box or for a new Connects gateway. Uh, the benefits of having the Connects gateway, you've actually got remote um, access to the system to make any configuration changes. They are the external contactor. If you're going to use, an, if you need require an external contactor, it needs to be as close as possible to XW Plus units uh, because they operate on 12 volts DC. So you're going to need to minimise the voltage drop to improve communications. Otherwise, if does if the inverter XW doesn't know what the status is of the contactor, it could actually damage the XW Plus. Um, use biggest wire size allowable, 2.5 mil for the. Uh, use only approved products listed in the appendix A, the AC combiner box of the XW Plus multi-cluster power system planning guide. 
And you can also calibrate the, you need to calibrate the output of all the XW plus units in invert mode as directed in the appendix I of the Connect XW plus multi-unit power system design guide. Those are the two documents I was referring to earlier. The ones that are available from our website. So this is sort of a typical, or well not typical, this is actually quite a large system where we have a cluster of three inverters, four inverters, should I say, uh, per phase. That then goes back to the cluster box, with the, then you hook up your connects, in this case, three phase inverters, and your generator and your grid. That will then provide um, a micro, micro grid system that you can use, say, for a remote community. And this is actually a hybrid solution where you have uh, solid charge controllers as well as PV, uh, PV string inverters. Okay, so when we look at the sizing, basically if you hook up a Connect Seal 18NA, you can have three XW Pros, 6848s, uh, 20, you can have three Pros of XW Plus, 6848s, Seal 36, you're going to require six off XW Pro, XW Plus, and 69, XW Pros or XW Plus. That's a three phase configuration for single phase. If you're going to use a multi uh, multiple units, you say three PV inverters can do three XW Pros, or two PV inverters can do two XW Pros. Uh, they give you uh, 15 kilowatts and 10 kilowatts, respectively. That's just an example of a, of a multi unit installation where we have, um, in this case, you've got two inverters per phase on a three phase installation. So that's it for me. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Now's the time to, to say so. Um, and thank you very much for attending. I uh, hope you hope it was clear enough. But uh, if you want, let's see, if you want a clarification, please send us some questions. Thank you.